What up, everyone? Welcome to the Fitbiz Podcast. Jordan here. Quick solo episode today where I'm going to talk to you about this concept called CEO's Top Goal. And what this is going to do is going to help you better prioritize what you need to be doing first thing in your day to uh, push your business forward. And this has honestly been one simple system that's been a game changer for me uh, over the last like five years. Uh, I, I really cannot emphasize enough how if you just stick to this one concept, you'll you'll find yourself never again saying like, man, I just don't have time to work on my business or I can't seem to get the things that I need to get done on my business to push it forward. Or even just having the necessary space to come up with the ideas and to come up with the, the, the game plan and the strategy to push your business forward. This framework really is the key, key thing for that. Right? I just can't emphasize it enough. And uh, so just for some backstory, but first, uh, Man, I, I want to just give some context here. I'm a little sleep deprived. Aaron and I have been dealing with a sick baby. Uh, those those of you out there who are parents, you know how it goes. This is the first time we've really dealt with uh, a sickness that he's had that's like really kept him up all night. He's got a, like a head cold. And so he's super congested. And Aaron's really stepped up to like, uh, she was up with him most of the night last night. I was up with him from like, I don't know, 10 to like 1.30. And then I just threw in his towel. I came downstairs like, babe, you got to help me. I don't know what to do. I've got so much shit I have to do tomorrow. And I just can't seem to get him to stop crying. So anyways, the the fun and perils of uh, parenting. It's the best thing ever. But I digress. Let's jump into the concept. So when you're running a company or you're building a business, regardless of if you're brand new or you're building it uh, like to, to a million dollars, five million, whatever. Uh, this applies even if you're brand new, because if you're fairly new in your business, you probably also have a full-time job or maybe another part-time job, but it's all about, um, time management, right? And energy management maybe is arguably way more important, but when you're running a company, you have what are, what are called these inbound requests coming at us constantly. So just as an example, if you're an online health, fitness coach, nutrition coach, you've got client messages, social media notifications, you've got, uh, DMS, uh, you know, coming out the ass, hopefully people want to sign up for coaching. You've got, you know, personal requests on tra- on top of that. Maybe you're communicating with contractors, employees, and you have to figure out a way to carve out unavoidable or uh, uninterruptible um, time to avoid inbound requests so that you can work on the business. Okay. To work on the business, it really requires this concept of deep work. All right. So if you're watching this video right now on YouTube or Uh, whatever video, Um, you'll see here right behind me is this book called Deep Work right there by Cal Newport. And this is where I kind of first heard this concept from. And honestly, it was just a game changer for me Uh, where the idea is you want to work on the most important things that you have to get done or that you need to push forward first thing uh, in your day. Okay. So the goal here with like this top goal concept is you want to dedicate three hours, well, two to three hours every single day every day, first thing to work on your business. All right. So for me, that's always usually between like six and 9am or seven to 10am roughly. Uh, and if I can just have that space, then anything I get done on top of that throughout the day, like maybe I work on some things here and there between meetings, between, uh, you know, other stuff. Usually I'm in meetings in the afternoons, but like anything on top of that is just bonus. But, but man, I'll tell you what, like my ability to be effective And to produce like in between meetings or later in the afternoon just doesn't even compare to how I feel first thing in the morning in those first two or three hours. It's, it's a huge difference. Okay. So, um, you know, because the idea of like creativity too, a lot of us want to know how to be more creative. And I really think to be more creative, you have to, um, set up boundaries to be creative because creativity doesn't come when you have inbound requests flying at you constantly. Okay, I heard this quote from Rick Rubin one, uh, here recently. He said, uh, can you learn to be creative? And he said, can you learn to be yourself? And I love that quote because to be your, like to learn to be yourself requires you to be by yourself without distractions, without social media in your face, without Slack or text. So when you have this deep work time, you need to put your phone in another room. You need to make sure all your notifications are off and even just that space where you're there with yourself for two to three hours every morning, that's how you'll start to be creative because you're, you're, you're there with your own thoughts. Okay. And ideally you have some projects and things that you're working on, but sometimes like I have creative spurts that hit me maybe once or twice a week and they always end up coming in those morning hours because I'm, I'm dedicating the space for it. 
and my brain knows that there's nothing that's going to interrupt me generally. Now, again, when you have a newborn, <laughs> sometimes those things don't go as planned, but like, just like with any goal, if you sit out to say, okay, um, I'm going to dedicate, let's just say 30 minutes every morning for my top goal, for my deep work, and then slowly add to it, go to 45, then to an hour, then to an hour and a half. Don't be like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to have three hours every morning, no matter what, because if you drop the ball one time, you're going to get discouraged and you're going to feel like a failure. So again, titrate up. But even if you dedicate, you know, this 30 minutes deep work uh, or an hour deep work every day of the week, and even if you get three of those in, because maybe you have things that just happen, man, it's, it's better than what you're probably doing now, right? And this idea too uh, of deep work also relates to task hopping, which is one of the most unproductive ways to work. Because what happens is when you start on one thing in the morning and then you jump to the next thing you end up leaving just a little bit of like mental sludge is what Cal Newport refers to it as uh, on that prior task. And so if you think about when you're six things deep in the day, you've just left six layers of mental sludge on all of those prior activities. So how much actual focus attention do you think you're going to have now by the time you're on that sixth thing? You're going to be way less effective. Your ability to concentrate, to focus, to think clearly, right? So Whatever the, whatever the things are that you're doing as your top goal first thing in the morning, just stick to those things, right? Maybe it's like, maybe you have two or three working projects. You know what, actually, it might be helpful if I just tell you what my top goals are for this week. Now, granted, I've built up to this. I'm pretty efficient with my, my work, and uh, this is probably going to sound like a lot, so don't try to model me, but I've been doing this now for, you know, seven years, okay? So my top goals right now are, like yesterday was Monday. So planning meetings for the day. So we had our team uh, KPI WEC meeting and our leadership meeting. We had our operations meeting and our marketing meeting. Those meetings to me are very important because that's what's setting our whole team up for the week. Okay, so I'm taking some really focused time to think through what are the things we want to cover on those meetings, what are the objectives, what are the areas of focus for this week, etc. Uh, then we're, we're working on our 2023 growth plan and our, our Q1, what are called OKRs or objectives and key results. We have an internal framework that I won't share for that, but uh, that's something that requires deep work too, right? Vision. As a CEO, you've got to be the visionary and you've got to be the one thinking like, what are the most important things that we're doing to push this business forward? Now we have leaders on our team too who are responsible for the, their own areas, right? But you still as the CEO have to think about like the big picture, the big strategic vision, all right? And the other things that I'm working through this week, uh, Number one, building a new sales script for our legacy CEO mastermind. Um, we're starting to kind of scale that up a little bit. So I uh, got to help train the sales team. Uh, content, um, recording podcasts like I'm doing right now. This this was done during my deep work time. Writing copy, recording reels, right? Uh, value hooks and trainings. So we have a free training coming up this Thursday, which I think if you're listening to this on Thursday, it's tonight. <laughs> but if you're listening to this later, it's, it's already passed but you can probably find the replay in the Facebook group. Uh, we're talking about how to use AI and things like chat GTP to uh, increase efficiency in your business to help you with a bunch of things. So I've got to build a training around that, right? So that's like a value hook, value like value for our audiences, right? Free goodwill. And then I'm also creating a new lead magnet right now, a free training for personal trainers. So I need to work on that. Then I also have product development right now that we're working on. So we're building out a new certification for uh, relatively beginner coaches who aren't certified and who want to get certified in functional. And uh, we're partnering with Metabolic Mentor, one of the top nutrition and functional health companies in the space. And we're going to be putting in a level one business cert material to just like, it's going to be like a business in a box to get your first five, 10 clients. And then uh, they're building out, well, it's already built out, uh, functional health, like level one certification to be a better coach, right? So for training and nutrition uh, and things like gut health, at, uh, hormones, acne, stuff like that. So that's going to be badass, and it's going to be like a fraction of uh, of IFCA. And then whatever you invest towards the certification, you can then roll over and use towards IFCA when you're ready to join. So excited about that. Uh, so I need to work on that, right? That, that's going to be launching here in a couple of weeks. Uh, I needed, I had to finish a new training for our clients, for our internal clients, which is how to create a group program and downsell, and. Uh, I also needed to create a scorecard for our clients on how to compensate closers. So you can see like those are all on the business things that if I did not create space for, or if I don't create space for, they won't get, they won't get built this week. Okay. And I, I left off two things. I also need to work on 
onboarding for a new uh, mentorship that I'm doing all around personal development. So that's like personal stuff, right? So I, I say all that to say like, map out your week, write out all of your top goals. What are the things that you want to get done this week? And then just dedicate the time to it. First thing in the morning, no if, ands, or buts. And the most important thing, like I said, well, two most important things. Number one, don't task hop. Okay. Now, when I say don't task hop, like I have multiple things that I just shared, but like this morning I had work on, um, podcasts for one hour. Then I had work on, uh, value hooks for one hour and then record podcasts for one hour. So those are three different things, but I had that structured to move onto those next things. Like when I moved from the one to the two, I was done with one, right? I wasn't thinking about it anymore versus like hopping around. Okay. So anyways, that's what's most important. And what's most important is keeping your phone in the other room, having all distractions turned off, no way that you can be interrupted because this is your golden hours. All right. So hopefully this is useful. Uh, if you did find it useful, you know, feel free to, or please share on your story, share this with anybody who you think might gain, uh, from it. And, uh, we, again, we appreciate y'all listening and see you on uh, the next episode.